because of its unique position as one of only three dry spots on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, plus the fact that there's almost a thousand miles of open ocean in all directions and a 200 mile military exclusion zone, Ascension has become one of the marlin hotspots of the world. But, as we shall see, there's more to it than that. Much, much more. This tiny pile of volcanic rubble was first garrisoned back in 1815 to keep an eye out for a rescue attempt on Napoleon, who'd been exiled to St Helena, and our military presence has continued ever since, with listening and communication now taking centre stage. All access is courtesy of the RAF out of Bryce Norton. Whether or not that will continue to be the case, or as with Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean, the US military get to rent the place off us, lock it down, then evict everybody, remains to be seen. And whether anglers will even want to continue fishing here is another unknown, as there is talk of selling permits for commercial tuna long lining, which as everybody knows will also catch marlin, sharks and everything else feeding in the upper layers of the ocean. So if you are thinking of going, get in there quick while there are still plenty of fish to be caught. Whatever the final outcome, the quality of the shore fishing shouldn't be affected, particularly for the dominant species which are black jacks, almaco jacks and even the odd yellowfin tuna from the deeper rock marks. What you do tend to find here is that the geography of the rocks above the water mirrors that below it. In other words, the steeper the climb down, the deeper the water at your feet. The problem is that we're not talking about any ordinary rock here. The vast bulk of it is sharp, twisted, jagged lumps of volcanic magma that's cooled. Very difficult to climb over and treacherously dangerous should you slip. So not the easiest of access but certainly the most rewarding, both to surface poppers and large weighty lures such as the Dexter Wedge. To keep both hands free for climbing down, and for ease of packing, Neil Bryant of Blue Zone Tackle had this four-piece travel popping rod made up in Italy by Artico, which I teamed up with a Shimano Saragossa 25,000 loaded with 80 pounds braid to help beat both the rocks and the fish. As for the lures, these all had the fittings upgraded, including a swap from treble to single hooks, then went out on a 200 pound braking strain mono leader. And still on occasion, these weren't up to the job. But on most occasions they were, that is when he could find the fish, which was usually given away by the presence of feeding frigate birds. brings a whole new meaning to popping out for a spot of fishing. And so it went on, often cast after cast from more difficult deeper rock marks. 
But the shore fishing at Ascension isn't all about how to access rock platforms. There are more accessible rock marks and beaches too. But unfortunately, their sport is not as assured. When it's good, it's very good. But usually, this is down to the bait fish shoals being pushed inshore, indicated by the presence of frigate birds. This is a sort of blackjack you can catch. Oh. What about that one, guys? That's got to be double figures. See the size of it? And you can see that big sloping forehead, which is when they get bigger. I'm going to come up just before I get sucked off the rock. One particular day, we drove around the entire island looking for birds and saw nothing. In the end, needing to wet a line somewhere, we dropped in on a low-level rock platform at Panam Beach, completely on spec, just to give it a go. No feeding fish indicators at all, and bingo, an absolute feeding frenzy, which just goes to show that you can't always tell. Apologies for the wind noise on the microphone on what follows, but it was quite a breezy day with absolutely no shelter to film from. There was unfortunately the occasional casualty, but even these didn't go to waste as the ever-present black triggerfish tore into them like a shoal of piranhas.
And so it went on, until eventually all the light was gone. 